in the physical. You see, one of the things that gives people the, the thought that these things are so powerful is because they can affect our physical being. Mm -hmm. They can make us look a strange way, speak in strange tongues that are foreign to us. You know, a physical manifestation. We must, we must say at the moment also there is a real of that, but there, yes, there, there yeah, is. Yeah. Before, before somebody brings, oh, he's saying, he's saying no, speaking no, in no. tongues of the devil. Yeah, no, yeah, I, no, no, I know you know that. You know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so, so, you know, we should always be aware that, that Christ will always conquer these things if we're willing to accept mm. Jesus and mm. accept his power, not our own power. Mm. Amen. So important, isn't it? Yes, and I like um, the, the email there because I agree with what, what he said. We, we definitely do need to be in balance um, uh, and be aware of, of Christ's victory and not dwell on these things at yeah. all. That's not healthy. Not get out of balance, not look for demons under every stone. That's really stupid. Um, but I think we just do need to sometimes be aware of it and um, like my own testimony, I'm not in the habit of sharing it. I went many years without sharing, sharing it, it yeah. um, pre partly because of not wanting to be as if always talking about demons. Yeah, right. But on the other hand, it's, uh, these testimonies do need to be shared to, to one folks, yeah. and it is the balance and, and it sharing is because without you, you, dwelling. Yeah, because you do talk about the demons, but of course you talk about the Christ that overcame mm -hmm. the demons. And, That's and that, right, that, to, that, to glorify so it him. Is. Yeah. To glorify him and lift yeah. up his name and exalt yeah. him. and. Yeah, more absolutely. so than, than talking about the other side. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Um, uh, Doug, please advise. My friend is schizophrenic. Uh, he's a Christian, but used to smoke drugs and attributes mental illness to this. He's had he's had much prayer, but everyone says there is something dark there. I want I once saw books on occult in his home, although he says he's no longer there. What would you advise? Well, if he's if he's uh, been taking drugs, dr drugs naturally are mind altering, and one of the things about drugs is that they take us to parts in our mind that medi the medical profession don't know an awful lot about. I believe that's an open door. The first thing that I always find with people who are smoking marijuana very heavily is they become paranoid, and you know paranoia does lead to schizophrenia. Uh, paranoia and schizophrenia are certain acute types of fear. That come on and as we know God didn't give us a spirit of fear but of power love and sound mind so when these fears and paranoias come upon us they must be the works of darkness but that's not quite as simple as that because of course constant drug abuse can damage mm. you know physically damage us that we can't think correctly anyway yeah so we we, we certainly he, he needs to want help doesn't yes. he? And, and I suspect in a situation like that, it would be looking to both get spiritual help, but also um, yes. medical help as yes, well, both together at, at, at that point in time. Help with his addiction. Yeah. Um, if moving into a new home, how can we cleanse and bless it? Oh, well, you know, we've, we've all got the Bible in front of us if we're Christians. When we move in a house, we claim that house. We claim it in the name of Jesus Christ. And whatever went on before, because when we move into houses, we don't know what's gone on before. There might have been nothing gone on before. They might have been inhabited by people who were very happy and loving there. But I always think that we should go in there and just claim that house for Jesus Christ. You know, cover that house with the precious blood of the Lamb and, you know, say good things about that house and say good things of what we're going to do in the future in this house. Mm -hmm. This is your house, Lord. We invite you here. May you make your presence here. Amen. And that's what we do. Because he's the only one that can do it, can't he? Because yes. Because if there is anything in the atmosphere in the house, he's the only one that can do it. We can't do no, it. No, we can't so do you, anything. So you, you've got to invite him in. Yes. I mean, but and it's the same, isn't it, with, with us. Yes. As, as you, just as we're talking about that house, of cleansing that house and inviting it, that's exactly what's got to happen to us as well. Yes, yes, isn't yes it? I mean, exactly. But that's what happened. We, I've got to, let me just start, we've got, got a um, text here from Susan. Uh, how did the lady uh, come to the Lord after she read Deuteronomy 18.9? Uh, she obviously doesn't feel you uh, said it and, and that clearly enough. So uh, you read, you, you saw Deuteronomy 18.9. What happened so that you came right the way through to the Lord? Basically, the next few days, um, I was having quite a few conversations with my friend Susan, who was a Christian. She invited me back to that church, and I did go for a few Sundays, I think it was a few weeks, a, 
couple of weeks before I actually fully committed to Christ and in that time there, there was obviously a lot of thoughts going on and I had to, well I spoke to my mother, I was concerned about her because she was still in the psychiatric hospital. She was really quite upset and angry with me at first. She felt I was a traitor to our spiritualist beliefs. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a couple of weeks and um, I don't know, it was just one day I just suddenly realised that Christ was who he said he was. and Well, also because of these other testimonies that I'd heard from ex-occultists that Christ was the only one who could help them. Mm -hmm. That, I think, kind of cinched it for me as well. Right. Um, so so I did ask Christ into my heart um, in the church and really began to, to go okay. more, yeah. more often. Yeah. Um, but my mother, um, she it took a little while, but she would come to the church. She was allowed out at the right. weekend from the psychiatric ward, so I would take her to the church. She did eventually ask Christ into her heart as well. However, the problem there was that she still had to go back to the psychiatric ward, her house was still haunted. Um, so when she, she did get a lot better through through prayer from the Christians in the church and eventually the psychiatrist said she was free to go home. But at that particular time in that church that we were in then, Christian church, they didn't have the deliverance ministry yet. They didn't really believe in the deliverance ministry yet. They, they do do it now, but at that point they didn't. So unfortunately my mother was, was really badly demon possessed and when she went home the poltergeist activity was still there she didn't really know christ strong enough yet she was still doped up on tranquilizers mm -hmm. so she couldn't even read the bible much and basically things got so bad that, that she took her life mm -hmm. she committed mm -hmm. suicide mm -hmm. but you know thankfully i was then a christian for a few months and, and christ was able to see me through that whole situation that was tough wasn't it it, it was very traumatic yeah, yeah very very and and very interesting that he took you through it ra rather than it sort of knocking your faith that that he took you through it that's that, that, that's great yeah that's great. Uh, it is yep yeah okay, okay. we're, we're going to uh, run out of uh, that time at the moment um, my grandson said in his bedroom he sees bad people that upset him what can I do to help him he's only six years old he lives in an army quarter You need to pray for your grandson. You need to spend some time with him when he goes to bed of a night. And even after he's asleep, to continue praying for him as he goes into the various levels of sleep. Uh, be there with him, uh, comfort him. Can I just tell you about my own granddaughter? Please do. Many, many years ago, my, my granddaughter had a very difficult start to life, very difficult. Her father walked out on her when she was four weeks old and my daughter had to bring her up on her own and it was very traumatic. She ended up homeless and having to move in with me. When they did finally find a place, she said to me, she was six, she said, Grandad, I went to sleep last night and Hades came. And I said, pardon? I said, where did you get that name from? And she said, that's who he said he was, Hades. And I said, what did he look like? She said, very dark and he had a cloak and he covered me. And I said, and how did you feel? She said, well, I was very frightened, Grandad, and I didn't know what to do. And I mm. said, well, what happened? She said, you know who came? And I said, oh, she said, Hercules came. So I said, who was Hercules? She said, this man turned up in armour with a flashing sword. And she said, the Hades ran away from him. And I mm. said, what happened then? She said, this man just stroked me on my head and I went to sleep. Now, she told me this, and she was only six years of age. So... I do believe with children in particular, because children think about things, they imagine things. Uh, I think we have to be very, very careful, especially at the night time, we pray for them. As I say, even after they've gone to sleep, spend 20 minutes with them continuing to pray so they receive peace. Mm -hmm. Peace is the greatest thing, it overcomes all things. Mm. Amen. Amen. Could I maybe add to that? Please. Something similar happened with our child. Um, and I, I just sort of, uh, I asked my pastor's advice and she spoke with him, prayed with him and she also said, you know, just explain Jesus, explain the blood of Jesus and so that he can do that himself in that situation and he did. The yeah. next time an evil spirit <coughs> came in his room, he spoke about Jesus and the blood of Jesus and the spirit left mm. and didn't come back. Mm. So it's good to perhaps, if you can maybe 
teach them a little bit? It is, and it's communicating.